All right, we're going to start Strategy and Tactics, magazine number 99. We're going to play Thunder at Lutzen, which I believe was in 1979. And when was the magazine date? Let's see. Uh, no, this magazine was January, February 1985. All right. So it's a 122 by 34 inch map. And you can see there's only four units deployed, and that's Prussian Cavalry. And they're pretty much going to be a, a delay for Napoleon's guys coming on. Now, this is after Napoleon was in Russia, and most of his generals, even a lot of the soldiers, just didn't believe that anybody could make the French army what it was prior to Russia. And uh, Napoleon was intent on proving them wrong. Um, he's got the guard with him. He's got uh, Ney with the 3rd Corps, which is really, really large in this game. He's got the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 11th Corps with him. Um, he got a bunch of random entries here. The French have two. They come in here, and they come in here. And Napoleon's intent was to draw the Prussian forces into them, and then little right hook to uh, uh, sort of destroy him, you know, typical Napoleon. Get him cornered and, and or get him involved in something and then swing around on one of their sides. Uh, the allies have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine potential entry locations. And, uh, when you're playing the game against somebody, you have these markers that you put on there to hide the units that tells them what area they're going to come in. Um, I'm going to do random. I'll probably just roll a 10-sided dice and just list the areas from 1 to 8 and see what happens. See if it changes anything. Um, here's Lutzen right in the, I guess it's the west middle of the map. Um, the allies can start coming on the board on the 1600 game turn, which is four game turns in. Um, the French Fifth Corps comes on the board immediately, and Ney comes on a couple turns later with that massive corps. So the Fifth Corps of the French Lortz and comes in up here. And then Ney will come down here with the Third Corps. And eventually the Guard will come in down here. McDonald's, uh, I think he's got the 11th Corps, they'll come in up here. The first cab, it's only got one unit, they'll come in up here. Um, the command in this game is interesting. You have morale points. So for each corps that comes on, that leader or that corps has a certain morale level that they add to the army. So they all have nothing right now. So uh, Lauritsen will come on and he'll immediately kick the morale up to 12. But he is committed, and once a corps is committed, whatever the fatigue value is on the commander, which we'll take a look over here. Let's find Lawrence in the fifth corps. He's a 2-8. So his fatigue value is 2. So every turn that he's committed, two points come off the morale track. And every turn that he's in reserve, two points go back on. And at nighttime, it's all doubled. Now... When a unit comes in as reinforcements, they're automatically committed. So they start losing morale points right away. You have a ceiling that each corps provides. So like Ney comes on, he has 24 morale points he adds to the record. But his ceiling is 48. So for the ceiling, you can add 48 points for the ceiling. So they can actually, they can actually take their morale higher than what it is when they come on for the, for the entire army. Um, changing whether a unit is committed or whether a unit is in reserve, and whether a unit act independently, like this cavalry, because there's no leader on the board. Uh, the allies can have six units independent. Uh, Napoleon, I think it's eight. I, I gotta check that. But no unit can change its, no core can change its status unless the commander, the army commander, which the French would be Napoleon, the uh, allies have two commanders. Uh, Alexander and um, Wittgenstein, I believe is his name, I don't know how you say it. But they can only issue one order a turn to specific units, specific corps, so it's going to limit them a little bit. But 
with the way the units are spread out, in order for like Napoleon to issue an order to a corps, he has to be within their range, which for all corps commanders is six hexes, and except for Ney, Ney is eight. So he's got to be within their command range, and he can now Napoleon can issue six orders a turn, so he gets a big advantage on that. But I did a play of this. I had to I had to tear it down. I started to play it. I had to tear it down because I needed to put my new table here together, my new plexiglass. So I'm gonna start over again. I got a little bit better grasp on the rules. Um, the combat, you have exchange, you have attacker reduced and retreated, you have attacker reduced or retreated, then you have defender reduced or retreated, and then you have defender reduced and retreated. Uh, they're all the same in opposite directions. So the attacker retreat or reduced and retreat means he loses a step and he retreats. If you get an attacker reduced or retreat, if it's a French unit <clears throat> and he's a full strength unit, he can just retreat. If anything other than that has to reduce. If he's already reduced and he is the attacker and he draws that, then he retreats. Whereas on the defender side, if you draw, if the die rolls a D is a defender reduced or retreated, uh, the defender reduces the first time, unless it's a full French, a full, full French infantry unit. But if he's reduced and he gets another one of those, he's elim eliminated. So that's the one change in the game. So morale is, the, uh, is how you get victory here. Um, there's one objective for the French which can help them get a win um, if they own Leipzig Bridge right there. Other than that, it's uh, demoralization of an army. Um, and when I was playing through the first time, the combat system is... is kind of interesting because cavalry, as long as they have movement points and they don't get stopped, they can continually attack up to the max of their movement points. And it costs whatever the terrain is of the unit you're attacking to move into that terrain. So if you move through one clear hex to get beside him and that's one, and he's in a clear hex, that's two, and you fight him. If it's cavalry and he wins the fight, he can continue to fight until he runs out of movement points. Artillery, which most of these have a movement point of three, they can fire three times if they don't move. So as long as, a, and they're the only ranged units on the board, so they can fire three times if they don't move. And um, I found that you really need to put that into to use. There's not a massive amount of artillery here. No stacking. Um, one unit moves and does his combat before you touch another unit. So the no stacking thing, I love that. I love games that where you don't stack. I, I try to play some games that have stacking without stacking just to quit cluttering up the board. But sometimes you just have to. If you want to get good hand-to-hand -hand combat odds or melee odds, sometimes you just got to stack stuff up. All right, so we're going to get this started, and uh, we're going to try to report back after each turn or each couple of turns. The game moves pretty fast. So, All right, Thunder at Lutzen, S&T number 99, February of 85. Be back shortly. All right, so we've completed the first five turns. We're getting ready to start the 1800 turn on May 1st. No combat yet. The uh, cavalry for the Prussians has done a job for the most part of keeping the French corps from moving, extended movement on the roads. Except for right there where I didn't put one of those cavalry units over there with a zone of control on that road. So third corps moved right in that gap. Might be some fighting unless the cavalry gets out of there. Um, third Corps, you see they're spread out in three columns with cavalry slowing down the best they can. Only problem is the French have a movement of four. So on a road, a major road, they can move eight. Well, if they can. And on a secondary road, they can move six. Where all the allied infantry only have a movement allowance of three. So they're a little slower. All right, so you got the Third Corps. The guards right behind them, and they're not as potent as what you would think. They do have a seven and some five infantry level uh, strength units. They have three artillery resonators and have some good cavalry. Uh, trying this time to get the French corps somewhat con consolidated. So with Napoleon coming on with the corps here, he'll be able to get to to units easier in order to put them into reserve or commit keep them committed to save on morale points. Uh, both Tormasov and Blucher decided to bring them in 
on the 1600 turn. They ended up rolling for the same entry hex, so one right behind the other. And they're going to try to move to get into, a, I guess, a defensive position. So Napoleon, the French win by either demoralization of the Allies or they're not demoralized themselves and they capture the Leipzig Bridge. I got to find out what these other victory locations, what they represent, because I might be missing something. But those red towns or cities are French victory locations, so or French objectives. So I need to research that, because that, that might be missing something there. Uh, but it looks to me like, with the conditions the way I read them to win, probably to get the Allies along this hilly ground behind this river, maybe down through there and across to the cities over here. Because uh, Napoleon's got to go after him if he wants to get a victory. Otherwise, it's the Allies. All right, so we'll see how it progresses. There'll probably be some combat here shortly, I would think. Or it might not happen until they get over in here. If I can get the Allies there, depending on where everything else comes in at. All right, we'll get back to you after another turn or two. Okay, so we played from the 1800 turn all the way through the end of the night turns. So we're at the first morning turn, which is 0700. Uh, boy, I tell you, once you get to night turn, everything just stops. You gotta get everybody into reserve status so that you can build your morale tables up. So you can see that the French are sitting on 108 morale points to use. And the allies are sitting on 81 and they don't get any more reinforcements so that's it for them um, they've lost one cavalry unit he got reduced and then got hit again and that took care of him so that's, that's i think six points total they lost in their morale napoleon still has a very large what's that sixth core or fourth core and he's got the 6th core, and he's got 7th uh, core, just a unit or two. And I boo-booed on the guard. Thank God I hadn't gotten into any combat. Um, only a part of their, only their cav comes on with Napoleon and with the guard's uh, core commander. The rest of them come in here at the 1100 turn right there. So they'll be along soon enough. All right, so got everybody in reserve status. They're resting. No combat at night. You cannot move into an enemy zone of control. You can move out. Um, but you got to get in reserve to build those points up. So the front line's set. And uh, we'll probably get into the fight here. Like I say, Napoleon, he has to attack to win. The Prussians just sit there and Napoleon doesn't do anything. They'll end up winning. Probably leave Blucher in reserve and let him just keep accumulating those three points every turn. Um, and bring him out when necessary. And we'll see how long this Allied line can hold up here. You got a mixture of Russians and Prussians up here. All right, let's get to the fight. Uh, we'll get back to you after a couple of game turns, see how this develops.